This is a school bus that crashed in Elkins. No kids were inside, but this is the damage. I'm in Springdale beside Interstate 49, where earlier this morning it was raining and temperatures are below freezing. Take a look behind me where traffic is continuing to move, but Arkansas State Police is warning drivers to take it slow. If you take a look at this grass right here, it is dry, and there have been two wildfires in Rogers. But right behind me is an Alex Ross created uh, Superman comic called Peace, Peace on Earth, that came out right after the 9-11 attacks. In it, Superman is saving the world from disaster, hunger, and even drought. A student was reportedly sexually assaulted three weeks ago. If you take a look behind me, it's a Harmon Avenue Garage Center. Academy Award-winning actress Gina Davis says the goal of this film festival is to spread awareness of diversity when it comes to women in films. Organizers will be meeting right here at the Walton Arts Center parking lot at 11.15. Following that, they will be marching up Dixon Street all the way to the University of Arkansas. A Bella Vista man will appear in court Tuesday morning accused of raping two young girls. Now those girls belong to Representative Justin Harris of West Fork. He's speaking out against accusations that he gave his daughters away to a known rapist. We reached out to DHS numerous times and we were met with nothing but hostility. Representative Justin Harris is slamming the Arkansas Department of Human Services, claiming they not only refused to care for his adopted daughters, but threatened to have them charged if he gave them back to the state. We again reach out to DHS for help. Then we were threatened with possible abandonment charges. There would be no benefit to us not helping fans. DHS spokeswoman Amy Webb can't comment on this specific case but did provide this general policy. If a family has tried to make it work and they've exhausted all their resources and they come to us, we would not seek abandonment charges. We would take that child back into our case. Webb says between 2006 and 2013 there were 66 failed adoptions in Arkansas where families gave their children back to DHS. When asked why he decided to give his adopted daughters to his employee, Representative Harris says he took the threat of charges seriously. We were threatened with that and I believed it. And so we had no choice. And so that was what we believed. If the head of DHS said that, well then that must be the law. And so we believed it. We are not familiar with any senior high up officials making that statement. Now Representative Harris tells Five News he has no plans of resigning, but he did say he's stepping down from serving in several House committees. In Washington County, Joshua Figueroa, Five News. One rural town was completely shut down when federal agents stormed in, arresting 5% of the population. Residents say they are in disbelief. With a population of 800 people, business owner Dusty Smallwood describes Clayton, Oklahoma as a rural town with farmers and ranchers. People are good, hardworking, honest country folks. But admits there is a drug problem in the town. And especially in small town America where we're raising our children and we believe in God and country and that type of thing, you know. Hey, we don't need drugs in this, in this part of the world to make a living. Friday morning, investigators were out looking for 43 suspects connected to a crystal meth ring. If I was a drug dealer, I would uh, think it would definitely be a wake-up call when you wake up of a morning in a small town like this and you see over 75 law enforcement agencies, uh, OSBI, FBI, ETFs, all in the town of Clayton. Clayton Police Chief Darren Morris says 32 were arrested. That's almost 5% of the town. But that 5% was a problem. Smallwood says the operation brought the town to a complete standstill when all four ways to get in were blocked off. They had a notebook and they were checking off a list of people as they went through the roadblock to see if you were one of the suspects or not. People are going to make mistakes and they're going to pay for them. Ronald Ostradock says his mother was one of the 32 arrested. I'm just, I'm really more mad at her than anything else that she would allow something like that to happen when my children were there. Morris says two of them were already in prison, bringing the total to 34. Currently have eight right now. Eight on the loose. Eight on the loose. And we're going to get them. You cannot hide. You cannot hide. Now, police say that two suspects remain at large. And if you have any information, you should contact OSBI. In Clayton, Oklahoma, Joshua Piguero, 5 News. A local grocery store around for 50 years is finally closing its doors because they can't compete with this retail giant.
Walmart. Residents of Mountainburg are losing an old gem, a store around since Eisenhower served as president. Dean Gaddis says he's saddened. Whatever we buy meat, we buy a lot of it here at Bassum's because uh, they buy cut their own meat and um, it's reasonably priced. Uh, Got to get some milk here. The store helped him and his wife during tough times. Bassum's grocery store closes on New Year's Eve. For some, this is the closest shop they have for miles. It's also an alternative to support local businesses as opposed to shopping at Giants retailers. It offers eggs, dairy, and meats at good prices. We always appreciated they had what we call Banana Tuesday. Every Tuesday, bananas were uh, 25 cents a pound. Harry and Lois Bassam opened the store in 1952. They then sold it to their son Terry and his wife Joyce. Terry suddenly died last year. Joyce retired this year after teaching for over 40 years. They're sort of a fixture of the community and it kind of breaks everybody's heart to think that we're, we're losing them. Uh, but I guess that, that everything changes. But uh, that sort of leaves us without a grocery and gas is awful expensive to drive all the way to Alma for, for your basic groceries uh, that, uh, that we do. More than the affordable prices, Gaddis will miss the people. Yeah, I sure sorry to hear that we're going to lose you all. The family tells 5 News they're closing in a few weeks and they have no plans of reopening. In Martinburg, Joshua Piguero, 5 News.